Hey, it's Joseph here. We live in a day and age where there are so many great tools out there for us to use for architecture and design. I try to keep myself up to date with the latest and the greatest so that I am not missing out any. And I'm pretty sure you're watching this video to do the same. As I have stated in the title, today we are looking at D5 Render. It is a fairly new rendering software and it is my very first time featuring it on my channel. In fact, this renderer actually shown up under my radar a while back when it was during beta. And I think it is right time to showcase now as it's got some great features we can all benefit from. D5 Render is a rendering software that leverage ray tracing in real time. And ray tracing is a keyword that we want to understand. Basically, it is a rendering method that generates an image or pixels based on tracing the path of light. This technique actually exists for quite a some time now and most of rendering engines renders image in this way. As light tracing is very complex, it requires a lot of computation. Therefore, historically rendering took a very long time and required very good hardwares. But ever since NVIDIA developed a specialized graphics card for this very purpose, more and more people have been putting their effort in developing all of this technology further. Whenever you see the letter RTX, they're referring to the ray tracing. The recent graphics card that has RTX in the naming are capable of outputting some visuals that are very realistic. So to test out D5 render and its capabilities, we need a machine that has a graphics card with the RTX naming. Do not look further, the mobile workstation from MSI got you covered and it is a machine that is sitting in front of me and is the sponsor for this video. The MSI mobile workstations are made to perform complex tasks in a wide range of professions and disciplines. It delivers best-in-class quality and reliability, creating the premium performance. The architecture, engineering, and construction industry requires performance, and MSI mobile workstation can provide that. It allows you to stay agile as you can take the machines on the go. And these laptops are certified by different software vendors such as Autodesk, Graphisoft, and more. And they will offer optimized performance when producing 3D models and complex renderings. And I'll be using this WS66 for the rest of the video, showing you its performance in ray tracing. This specific unit is equipped with i9-10980HK 3.1 GHz CPU and NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000. The large amount of 64 GB of RAM allows for it to handle large projects and its color accurate screen is ideal for judging the colors of your rendered images. And I really like the fact that I can touch on the images to quickly mark up the images. Okay, so first we can go to D5 Render's website and then the button you will see is free download. So we can click on that and then you'll be able to just download the file via clicking this button over here. And also if you were to scroll down a little bit, you'll find the official demo scenes which has the Chinese style interior. So we're gonna use that to have a look at its capabilities. So go ahead and download that as well. And if we scroll further down, you'll see the D5 converter plugins. And what that is, is to kind of synchronize your working model with D5 render. And in this case, you can see SketchUp, 3ds Max, and then ArchiCAD, Rabbit, Blender, and Rhino. In our case, we'll be using SketchUp. So let's go ahead and download that as well. So once we have downloaded that, let's go ahead and extract and install. And if you go inside, the scene file will have the DRS file, which is a D5 render file. Once we double click that, the D5 render splash screen will pop up. And then you'll be able to see this as it gets loaded. And you can see all of this is sort of real time. So you're able to just kind of 
go in as you wish. I'm using with WASD key because I am in the walk mode. If I were to be in the 3D mode, I can kind of orbit around with the middle mouse button and then also kind of pan with holding down shift key and zoom in and out with the scroll wheel that is in the middle of your mouse. In this case, I can also go to the walk mode so I can use the WASD key. And if I wish to, I can hold down shift key to go faster and then I I can elevate myself by using Q and E. So Q to elevate yourself, E to go down, and then walk forward, backwards, sideways, and, and if you hold down your right mouse button, then you are able to look around and then move with the keys combination. So the navigation system is quite intuitive. You will adjust to it in no time. And on the top right hand corner, I can also select high quality and the materials will look a lot more realistic and I can still freely swim around without much trouble. If you ever notice any sluggishness, you can also lower it to medium settings to save your computer's resources. And since we upped it to a high quality, let's go ahead and admire the quality of the image that is being shown. There's a lot of white and reflections and soft shadows. All of those are not actually that easy to draw quickly. And look at this glass sculpture. All of this is being rendered in real time and they look fantastic. Let's go ahead and pick some of the pre-saved scenes. So if we click on that, you'll see it will have a little bit of animation as it moves to that spot. And then you can also toggle between scenes. And again, it is rendering all of those with its full potential. The shortcut to see all of this list is Alt 4, and then Alt 3 is a one up two, one. So you can quickly toggle between sky and then filter and views and then the list. So you can flip through these scenes that are saved and you can also go to the render drop down and then click on the video. And once you click on the video, you are able to select one of them and then play that. So you have this smooth motion that are doing the dolly zoom and everything looks really good. And you can exit out by clicking this button that is on the top right hand corner. And with D5, the most appreciated aspect of rendering is the quality of light. The shadow goes from more defined to blurred, giving that natural look. And you can play with the shadows by hitting Alt 2, which is the filter section here. We can adjust the exposure, perhaps reduce that a little bit. It gives you a bit more contrast on the scene. Obviously, the personal taste will take place here, but I prefer less burned out places like this in my scene. On top of the well-maintained light quality, if we were to take a look at NVIDIA DLSS and if we turn that off you'll see things start to kind of look pixelated whereas if you were to check that on things will look a lot sharper gaining a lot more resolution this is basically GPU magic where it is handing you more resolution and quality without any performance hit it is AI that is working to give you more resolution. It is really great stuff, but you're gonna need a graphics card that is compatible with this technology to utilize this feature that D5 Render has implemented. Since we got familiarized with the D5 Render, let's go ahead and check out some simple scenes so we can test out different things. Here is a pavilion model that I have been using to test out different rendering softwares rendering capabilities. And you will also notice the D5 render extension toolbar. Here I can either click on this, but for this specific purpose, let's go ahead and click on this play button to start the D5 render. And with the splash screen, you'll see that it is going to prompt you whether you want to go ahead and start a new one. I'm gonna say okay and very shortly you'll be able to see the model. As long as you have the converter installed for your 
3D modeling software. That process is really easy as you can see. And if you don't want to use the converter, you can also go to the imported section and then import different set of models that are available to you. And you will be able to combine different set of models together in your scene. So I would bring different type of entourages such as furniture so that you can place them into your scene that you are working on. Let's go ahead and flip this to this specific scene and then you'll notice that everything has shifted to match the scene that I had on SketchUp. And if I were to go to the sky setting here, you can change the time of the day, the north offset. So all of the sun control is available to you as well as you can go to HDRI and set different set of HDRI that are available to you. So let's go ahead and set it to this light cloud scene and then you can control the sunlight intensity if you would like as well as controlling the color temperature. You can rotate the HDRI image as you wish and then you can turn on the sun here as well. So you can change the sunlight intensity. In my case, I'm gonna kinda keep it, let's say rotate it like so, so I can see some sunlight as well as keeping this back at one there. And I'm gonna reduce the HDRI skylight intensity so that it is not as intense. So I'll play with that as I go through the scene. And here, all of these preset light that are in the scene is quite distracting. So I can go to the check and then show light source. If I turn that off, you'll see all of those aspects are being turned off. And if we were to go back to SketchUp, in order to get these lights shown up, on your D5 render, you're gonna have to place them. Let's go ahead and delete it so I can show you how I have gone about adding that. So here I have add light objects on the D5 toolbar and then this additional toolbar will show up. And then in this case, I've used a spotlight and basically I can just kind of click on the center point of this light here and then kind of angle it down so that it is pointing straight down and then maybe lower it down just ever so slightly so that it is more central. And then if we go back to D5 render, there is a little flyout menu here. You can click on that and these are all the lights that are in the scene. I can actually toggle them on and off. So here I can turn those spots off, off, and then off. So there's one light over there, which I can turn back on. And then these are the spots that are basically over here. And notice how there's a two, and then there are two of the same components on top here, which is the one that I just put in. And if I want to adjust the intensity here, I can just toggle that down and then making it less bright. So I kind of like it over there and that's kind of burning up. So let's go ahead and make sure our exposure is set to none auto so that we can do fine tuning of all of these lights. So there you go. And then that specific light is on now. And this light is obviously too bright. So let's kind of lower that down. And then we want more sunlight in the scene. So let's go back to the sun settings and then bring up the sun intensity so we can see more sun in the scene and maybe increase the skylight intensity as well. I like this angle where a lot of lights are coming into the scene. And then sunlight intensity is one as well. And then I would also disable follow HDRI so that I can kind of play with the different solar heights. Kind of like seeing that sort of streak of shadow there. So I'll keep it that way. And then maybe I can bring up the exposure a little bit so I can lighten up the overall scene. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Let's go ahead and adjust the material a little bit. So if you were to pick the material, this blue one over here, you'll see all of those material values are showing up. Let's go ahead and zoom in to that spot. So it is sort of a fabric material that I had applied in SketchUp. And then here I can actually change this to cloth material if I wish to. And I also want to make the color more saturated. So I can do that by increasing the saturation and lowering the value so that it is darker. So here I do like this sort of dark 
polished concrete, but there is a little stripe that I want to work on, then I can go to the assets. And under the assets, notice how you're able to find different trees, cars, all sorts of different entourages on here, as well as if you go to the material, there are different set of materials that you can choose from and obviously you can modify afterwards or go to particles and what this is like the smoke or fire and such if you like to put that in your scene you can do so download it i can put it into the scene if i would like to set this pavilion on fire obviously i don't want to do that so let's go ahead and delete that i can choose on the material and then here for whatever reason the concrete is listed under paint so let's go ahead and pick something that I like, maybe beige. And then I can click on that to basically apply to that floor over here. So that is beige and I don't really like that. So let's go ahead and find something that is rough. Okay, I think that's better. So that is basically lighter stripe over here. The rest of the concrete floor is too dark. So let's lighten that up a bit. Maybe make it a bit more reflective. So bring down the roughness and you'll see how it becomes a little more reflective. Okay, so whilst the rest of the concrete is looking very polished, this one stripe isn't. So I think that is not really looking good. So let's go ahead a bit more roughness so that it is not looking as too polished. And also we can add some different set of entourages by going to the model. And then we are able to find some people over here. Maybe I can choose someone who's sitting on this seating. Casual man. Why don't you sit over here? And then one woman. Perhaps she could stand over here. And then in order to kind of rotate them, I can just click on one of these lines like so. So she's looking at that over there. And then he needs to turn around. So let's click on him and then rotate him around. And then elevate him so that we can kind of put him in a position where it looks more correct. And then if we were to snap back to the position, scene five, perhaps he needs to go up a bit and then pull back and then move to the right a little more. So that looks more correct. And then for this wood portion, I'm actually realizing that doesn't look as nice. So let's go ahead and find the PBR material. So assets, material, and then we get to choose whatever the wood we feel that is correct to this scene. I don't mind popular on this scene. So let's go ahead and click that. Click and apply. And notice the rotation is not correct. And then we can sample this specific material. And then for the base color, we can do individual UI. And then there I am able to basically rotate that. So you can just type in the value 90 enter and that way it is all rotated and then we just need to snap back to this specific scene maybe that one or this one I actually like the look of this scene so let's go ahead and hit render photo and then I can choose different field of view maybe stop it right there and then do a different set of scale it's going to have the save frame shown to you where it is going to render to or i can simply go to 2k or 4k 6k as you wish and then i can hit export and then onto the desktop and this was the tutorial and it is going to render away so this is what i was able to quickly put together what do you think we can also dive in much further into individual controls and the settings, but I wanted to give you a short overview of what D5 Render is capable of and showcasing the benefits of it. Thanks MSI for sponsoring this video. Again, MSI workstations are able to handle these complex tasks without any problem. If you're looking for performance machines on the go like this one, then check out their website. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check it out. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel to continue watching these type of videos thank you so much for watching as always 
I'll see you next time. Bye.